Everybody loves talking about the grind. Everybody loves talking about what it takes to make it in a business. This is not a story of someone trying to make it. We already made it. We're a $100 million company a year. We've already built a brand and a status within the industry, but that doesn't mean that we're done. Our current goal is to go from a $100 million company to a $300 million company a year. So stay tuned and welcome to Gray Market. everyone and welcome to another episode of Watches and Whiskey with my co-host Adrian. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let's pour a drink and a quick shout out to Nathan once again. If you guys remember last episode we did a little mail time, we'll do those from time to time and Nathan sent in a bottle of Blue Label which I actually really like so we decided to actually crack that open. Uh, while Blue Label for the Blue Strap. Oh, I see, I see what you did there. <laughs> and while Adrian does that, I'll quickly tell you what you have in store today. We're obviously going to talk about the new models that came out at Watches and Wonders, right? Of course, uh, we could dedicate six episodes if we go ev over every single brand and a bunch of watches. We just picked some highlights which we felt were good to discuss. And rather than getting all geek on you guys like everybody else has already probably done on YouTube, we're just going to highlight some things, make some predictions, and go from there. We um, are a little late to the game in regards to the Rolex and AP drops, but... So I guess but this is not, again, I never, when when uh, Watches and Wonders or Basel or uh, any other new models uh, came out, I was never the guy to try to be first and talk about them because, look, at the end of the day, there's a million videos out there that come out instantaneously. All the vlogs, all the big boys, the vlog to watch, who dinky watch collecting lifestyle. We're not that, right? So let's yeah, talk well, about People still want to hear our opinion about it. Well, so. that's, and that's why, that's, that's, that's why we're going to do just that. We're going to give our opinion. We're going to talk a little bit about potential value which I know that's your cup of tea, right. make some predictions and go from there. Before we do that, what are you wearing, Adrian? I am wearing the RM6702 Sebastian OGA, the World Rally Cup champion. And I know I'm going to catch a lot of slack from our YouTube friends about this watch. Because? Uh, well, I'll, I'll say this. This watch is probably the number one conversation piece ever. Because people look at it and they see the value in, in today's market is over three hundred thousand dollars for this for a watch that weighs thirty two grams and, and it's on they, an underwear strap and it's literally on a hair scrunchie yeah. and people are like, are you kidding me? Yeah, we did we did the Instagram story uh, when it first came in and uh, it was a lot of funny comments in that regard. Uh, but uh, I uh, am still wearing uh, while well, my hand is still all taped up uh, due to a freak uh, masturbation slash box cut incident. <laughs> uh, but uh, actually I had two stitches taken out that kept one in. They said they steal it because I, I guess I cut it pretty bad. Which means I had to put in a couple extra links into this vintage Daytona. But if we zoom in on the dial, let me just put my hand down. If we zoom in, zoom in close on the dial, you'll see it's just not any vintage Daytona. This one is special. This is the Conjar logo, which makes this watch worth about uh, $150,000 more than that of a regular vintage Daytona such as this. Uh, so again, let me I ask you this, which one is worth more, mine or yours? Yours. All this right, is about, this is about, this is about, again. this is about $250,000 to $280,000 mm -hmm. where your watch is over $300,000. Yes. Uh, which would I prefer? Both. <laughs> I would Good wear answer. that. Cheers just, to that. <laughs> just, as, just as much, yeah, you know, I'm a little parched, you're right. Parched. Blue Label is just solid. I mean, it's good. consistent, yeah. it's good, I like it. Uh, so since we're talking about what we bought, obviously, uh, I'm gonna quickly run through some of the newcomers that came in. As you noticed, Adrian's side is a bit lighter than mine because Adrian tends to stick to expensive pieces, for yeah. the lack of a better word. He picked up an RM11 Rose Gold Titanium. Now, tell me why, that, why you paid more money for this versus others on the market. Uh, I, paid, did. I paid top dollar for this because this one actually just came from Richard Mill Service. So what they did now was they actually issued new style papers. So it serves as a two year warranty. So it actually has the customer name, the serial number of the watch, when it was serviced. And this one happens to be from January 2021. So that adds a lot of value to the market. So theoretically now you have a Richard Mill with 2021 papers. It's essentially a new watch. Exactly. Which, so. which, is, which is great. And the reason we tend to pay more for pieces such as this, for example, one in this condition, just service, what, is, what are we selling it's about, for? It's, it's so pending condition, something that's not serviced like this, I usually like to be about 10% under what this is worth. Yeah. And you have, to also, you, you, have to, you have to figure that 
not only did they make it new, they overhauled the whole movement. Is when you send in a watch like that to Richard Mille, it takes a long time, and the process. You took the tedious. words out of my mouth so, because, from a dealer perspective, mm -hmm. if I pick up a pre-owned piece that's six, seven, eight, nine years old, and I know it needs to go into Richard Mille, which can take nine months to sometimes even a year at this point, think about the amount of money I'm freezing up for that time mm -hmm. period. I have to account for that, so therefore I'm going to want to buy it cheaper. With that said, guess what? I will gladly pay an extra 10, 15% mm -hmm. on top of that. So it's not like I'm gonna pay the same price. I will pay more for this, mm -hmm. to be fair. Because for me to send it in, for me to freeze all that money up for almost a year, it just goes to show. You also bought my absolute favorite AP complications. You guys that have watched my videos know the AP Alicari concept is my absolute favorite complicated AP out there. And what sucks is it's a watch neither me or Adrian can wear it because it's just it is too, just too big. big. I was gonna wear it on today's episode, but it just it's it's just far too big. And that being said, I actually mentioned this on my Instagram post a few days ago when I uh, posted the Alacrite concept that this what so what you're looking at here is this is essentially the predecessor to this because all the AP buyers, all the concept, but if you remember the AP concept used to be one of the hottest APs on the market, if not. I mean, they're still decently hot. Some Compared of them. to what they were, they're not as in demand. Absolutely. Okay, so Richard Mille kind of took the notes out of AP's book with this with the original Alacrite concept. The big, sporty, basically racing machine on the wrist. Different. Different. This was the first one, and I believe it retailed at the time for $120,000, and they have made a lot of examples since then, yet this is my favorite, and I think unanimously everybody's favorite concept, the Alacrite one. Concept. Not sure about the red strap on it. I, would I, probably, I actually I'd, love I'd the red I'd put it back strap on the original Kevlar strap. I feel uh, like that would be the ticket, but no, nah, red, red strap for the win. You ended up with an oldie but a goodie yeah, there as it, well. The AP Bumblebee in carbon. I mean, look, for a watch that trades $25,000 and under, what, what's out there from AP? And I think, that's, I think that's one of the better looking watches out there. One thing to note on that is they went with the uh, ceramic bezel on that right away after sort of a, a bit of an issue with the uh, uh, carbon alinghis, mm -hmm. right? Carbon Lincoln, the Rosa Lincoln, they had the carbon bezels on them and they used to get beat to crap. They looked pretty bad. So they made a carbon watch, therefore it's lighter, but they went with the ceramic bezel so the watch doesn't get beat up as easily. Plus, you know, there's a reason it's nicknamed the Bumblebee, obviously due to the colors, and I love the color scheme on that. Again, AP, please come back to 42 millimeter carbon pieces, please. Yes. They have not been doing it. They have and, not. And, and, and we'll, we'll probably get into that on the, on the next release, but um, they did not include any 42 carbons. But yeah. Well, we'll get into the new releases that. in a minute, but you guys know me. I love my complications. I love turbines and I love deals. So for me, it was all about somehow I managed over the last couple of weeks uh, to pick up lots of complications. I'll quickly go through them. If you want to talk about turbines, yellow gold blanc pond turbion. And I'm just going to throw a price out there. I mean, a watch that retail way over $100,000, or watch that you're buying under $30,000 today. Uh, next up is another Blanc Pond Turbion. This one is platinum, slightly slimmer. It's actually an older version of this guy. And again, a watch in platinum that's going to retail at less than $30,000. Oldie but a goodie, Edward Piguet. Yes, not the best line from AP, not the most successful, probably one of the least successful lines from AP of all time. But again, it's a Turbion that retails upwards of- 300,000. Uh, nah, this one's, I think it was like 230 something. Depends on the metal that you're picking up under $40,000 today. Well, let me jump back this way. Perpetual calendar equation of time from AP. Original list was 83 and change. Again, a watch you're picking up for under 25 grand today, which is absolutely insane. Chopart, LUC Turbion. I think original list on this piece was 168,200. I don't know how, to re how I remember that, but I do. Again, a watch that's under $30,000. Let's jump over to Oldie But A Goody, Jaeger Perpetual Calendar, a watch in rose gold under 20 grand. Uh, and of course, this, I don't know how this got in here, but I wanted to show it off. <laughs> I love my long gaze. We talked about long gaze on the last episode, and I managed to find a Grand Lang 1 in platinum. The Grande Lang 1s, they made less of them to begin with. They don't. They made a lot less of them to begin with. It was always the regular size Longi. This was their way to make watches slightly bigger because around the time they were coming out, that's when the offshores were getting hot and they were mm -hmm. like, well, wait a minute, let's just make something bigger. So they came out with Grande Longi 1. And by the way, some, we caught a lot of heat in the comments. The one German guy wrote, it's Longa. L-A-N-G-U-H, Longa. And guys, again, we don't speak German, we don't speak French. Exactly. So forgive, forgive our... We, I've been doing this 18 years, we're yeah, still we're, messing we're, up the we're, we're regular guys here. Um, we're not gonna... Another one 
we talked about uh, some of the dress here, Tad, 5396G. You remember the list off the top of your head? Uh, the retail was around fifty-four thousand dollars. Fifty-four three or something. Yeah. All right. So fifty-four three again. A watch you're picking up at a discount, brand new, right? Under mm -hmm. forty grand. Uh, yes. When you look at a fifty-seven eleven at a hundred thousand dollars, and then you look at a complicated paddock such as this, you probably say, "What a shame!" But I always say, "Look to each his own." If you are out there and you're the kind of guy that likes this type of watches, at the end of the day, it's your win. And mm -hmm. it all goes up and down. I mean, before the last drop in the market. It was the dressier watches that went through the roof, 5970s, other complicated stuff. Certainly on the way back, the 5905s, 5205s. Because they look so good, the rose gold black it dial. Does look good, it's but insane. Again, it's a dressy watch on a leather strap. You guys know I've showed you a bunch of bunch of sleepers in the past, right? And uh, I'm going to show you another one, the sympathy, the old sympathy collection from Roger Dubuis, right? This awkward. Uh, this awkward shaped case from these watches. I'm sure you have noticed online the perpetual calendars from these models have gone through the roof. That means that the automatics, which are these guys, uh, would, will be quick to follow. So these are watches that you would, in the bad times, these are watches that you've picked up, you know, under $10,000. Now they're, now they're creeping up towards that $20,000 mark slowly but surely. And it's only a matter of time because if you look at the trends, like the plain stuff tends to fetch more money. Well, mm -hmm. these are the automatics. These are the plain Janes from Roger Dubuis. And if you consider the fact that all of these are made in addition of 28 pieces, how many of them out there? And that's why I felt that these two were a sleeper and I picked them up. Love the rose gold. I mean, again, the, the be beautiful blue dial. It's crazy how you look at a brand like Roger Dubuis, and it's probably the only brand that I can think of that they're old. That if, if you look at the watch from far, you'll never be able to tell that it's a Roger Dubuis. Unlike today, you can pretty much gauge any brand. Well, I can. You just were too young back then. No, I understand, but I'm saying for, for people that don't know, they changed their watch more than any other brand. 180 degrees, 100%. Completely changed. Last but not least, you guys remember I, I was showing on, on uh, my Instagram stories, I'm sure some of you guys have followed, I bought a Crystal Ferra La Ferrari Turbion from Hublot. Lots of nasty comments, burn it, throw it away, this, that, and the other. I got the big look from agents like, you paid this for this, why? Lo and behold, that watch was sold in 48 hours, so I came back and did it again, except this time it's not a crystal. It's funny, I brought this, uh, I showed this to Anna this morning on our Instagram story, and she goes, but it's not the crystal. And I'm like, well, do you think they're just lying around? The one we had was a piece unique. And here's a titanium version of the watch. Same movement, same same concept, I actually prefer same drill. This one. The crystal. Usually, I like crystals better. I do like the crystals, but I think you're right, and I'll agree that's with you. That's car like carbon fiber. I'll agree with you a hundred percent for one simple reason: is because the beauty in this watch is the machine that's inside. It's the movement, the way it was made, etc. And again, won't won't get all geeky on you guys. Let me just show you the term. Yeah, it's modeled after a LaFerrari engine. Exactly. So, when you look at a crystal, I feel like the the movement tends to get lost among all that shiny crystal. So. You know, to have it in a different metal, again, this is probably about $100,000 cheaper, but to have it in a different metal, I think it's great. But with that said, let's get into some of the new models. And of course, right. I started from the top. I'm going to start with the releases of watches and watches. Why, why, don't, why don't we just get into the elephant in the room, or let's say the Black Panther in the room? No, we're going to get to that one why later. Why don't we just start off with that one? <laughs> why, don't, why, don't, why not? Let's, let's, start, let's start with a 57 why don't we, I say we start off on that one before I have too many drinks to say something that I probably should. Well, that's why I'm thinking. I'm, I want you to have a couple of drinks before we get into that watch. So I'm going to start with a 5711. Uh, Olive Sunburst Dial, they yes, called it. Yes. Retail, $34,800. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry, it's 34,800. I don't know yeah. where that's and coming from. And I love from. the bet that we made. Because because we're talking about this a little bit later in the game than others have, mm -hmm. and when this was first released, Roman came to me, he's like, what do you think the market price is going to be of this watch? A $34,000 retail. $34,890. I come up, my apologies. $34,890 paddock. He's like, over under 200,000 out the gate. I'm like, over 200, Without a doubt, what do you want? What do we even, we even bet on? I don't even think we bet. I on don't anything. remember. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but I definitely win <laughs> already. So, have you seen any in the market yet? Uh, I have not seen any advertised on the market, but I do know of somebody that had purchased one, gray market, let's say, and it, had, it hit over two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, so I'm gonna get to the next one, which is probably some something I would go after personally, and I don't often go out personally after something. I often, whenever I keep something personally, it usually comes into my lap. But the one I would certainly go after is that same watch with a baguette bezel. First stainless steel baguette paddock fire. ever made. Absolutely the baguette, fire. The baguette Nautiluses, be it the ruby, the emeralds, uh, be it the diamond ones, uh, just a bezel, just a full-blown watch. I mean, they're through the roof, 400,000 plus, right? 
In any variation. In any variation. Aquanaut, Nautilus, or the Grand Complications. Thoughts on this? I absolutely love it. So one thing I wanted to point out was that I actually saw um, a Patek Philippe client who actually got the green one at list, and he put it next to his blue one. Okay? Now, keep in mind, green, to me, it's a gimmick. It of is course a complete it is. Green gimmick. is hot right now. That's all, that's all green, it is. Green is hot right now, but when he put it next to the blue one, it wasn't that off color. I know. It was really, really, yeah, because really green, strikingly green pretty, similar. Like I, I said, uh, we're going to get into the Royal Oaks in a minute, but I, I've said it before that I think the best I did it was the new Royal Oaks, and we'll get into them in a minute. Yes. But before we do that, let's talk about the 5990 rose gold blue dial. Why not make that green? Well, I don't know, but I have been waiting years for the ever since the fifty nine ninety in steel. You've been waiting for the which rose, is I actually know. my. Which is, it's probably fifty nine ninety in stainless steel is my favorite stainless steel watch on the market. Like full bracelet stainless steel fifty nine ninety is my number one. Better than the skeleton fifteen four hundred seven and many other pieces. It is my favorite. My number one. Really? Yes, it's my number one. And you know, I haven't thought about my favorite stainless steel watch out on the market. More not, on a bracelet. Yeah, just like, like a daily piece. But you know, you could throw a tourbillon in there. Royal Oak tourbillon is a good one. You can throw a perpetual calendar in there. But then I'd, Nautilus, prob I'd probably go with a, I'd probably go with a stainless steel perpetual calendar skeleton AP Royal Oak. If I, would, I, have, to I, pick, I, if I have to pick I, a steel, I, would, I just I absolutely love the. 50 Listen, it is what it is. This is what you love. So well, why blue. not a green dial? Why blue? As a matter of fact, I actually look. I'm not. I'm not. A, I like blue dials. I, but I like blue dials on white on white metals better yes, than I, agree, I do 100%. on yellow or gold metals. I've never been like like they look good, but I get tired of it. Even when I was wearing the Royal Oak Perpetual um, in Miami, remember that one time when I set the whole date for New Year's, I found myself getting a little tired of the watch. There was just too much going, like too much color for my personal taste. Like I actually prefer the white dial on that variation. And I'm actually surprised they came out with the blue. Versus a black one first. You know what I think would have made this watch perfect, and maybe Ian can Photoshop this in. Is you take this fifty nine ninety with a blue dial. You know what dial should be on there? A gray or black dial. A gold dial. Yes, gold dial. Cheers. That, that watch with a gold dial would knock Smoke. it out of the park as far as Smoke. I'm concerned. Yes, absolutely. Let's talk some numbers. I know you made an offer on one. How much? Uh, so I don't. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty in terms of numbers or what I. One hundred six four fifty retail. Let's say I'm gonna say over four times retail. Market. Over four times yeah. resale. Over. That's insane. Some honorable, not so honorable mentions. The new annual calendar, 4947, first time in stainless steel. I absolutely hate this watch. I personally think that it's so disbalanced. It's the, the, the placement of the dial is just so off. Me, that's a butt ugly fact. Wait a second. The 4947 was a lady's watch on a strap before that. I don't think they made a men's ver I think this is the first men's version of this watch. Yeah, retail price 4790, which is reasonable, yeah. right? But to me, that's a butt ugly watch. On the contrary, I don't hate it. In the contrary, 5236P, yes. okay, the perpetual calendar is uh first of all, for the first time get a little geeky. The watch has ran off four separate discs. Mm -hmm. But this is that inline perpetual calendar. I think this thing is so clean right now. I mean, look at it. You have you have the day, the date, and the month all in line in one big window with the moon. It's super clean. What, I want, what is, uh, Ian, and Ian will pu pull this up on the screen. What is this indicator here at 7 o'clock? Th th there, this is a function, I believe. Which indicator? See this, this white dot right here? I believe that uh, is for day, something. Day, night. Is that what it is? Yeah. Day, night indicator? Yeah. So yeah. what I'm what I'm telling you is that look how clean this is and look how just. It is. It seems like whoever designed this was just like drunk that day and it just misplaced the dials. They're just not proportional. The numbers are not. I, I would say in the 4947 paddock, drop, not, not drop the ball, but I would say got lazy there. But on this. this I think they knocked it out of the park with the, the inline perpetual. The 5236P is cool. The only thing I'm going to say about it is that if you look at this watch from far, it's hard to tell that it's a perpetual calendar. Okay. But listen, but Paddock has always Paddock has often been about that. Think about their some of their mirror views. Think about the fact that they never show well, their turbines. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. that they are. They're modest in the sense that this is what they do, and, just, and they do and they do it all the time. Yeah. Real quick, I know I gotta get geeky on this. I put this watch in here uh, because I just had to. Okay, the Hybris Mechanica from Jaeger. Okay, the Quadriptique, okay? This is the most complicated reverse ever made. 11 complication, perpetual calendar, minute repeater, flying turbia, and get this, indication of synodic. Draconic and animalistic cycles. Do you know what those are? Um, what did you say, like dragon? Draconic? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. All right, so. Like zodiac signs? So, draconic <laughs> is your regular moon cycle 27 days, five <laughs> hours, and five minutes, I believe, is the exact time uh, of the lunar cycle, right? The synodic is the amount of time it takes to, 
the Earth to go around the sun on in a single month. So like how long it would take, let's say if it started February 1st, how long would it take to get back to... That's pretty dope. Yeah. And of course, your animalistic is going to be uh, the moon's orbit around the sun. And that varies. That doesn't have a set time. It, it changes from month to month. Which watch brand is going to come out with the first complication to... Uh, signify when Elon Musk's rocket is going to land on Mars. <laughs> Elon Musk, <laughs> obviously. I mean, uh, he he needs to get into the watch game. Again, four faces on this watch, right? Uh, the, the, the RM88 uh, uh, SpaceX. So there are four faces on this watch all in mm -hmm. together, and uh, Ian will throw them all up. Again, uh, retail is $1.6.5 million, 10 pieces made. Obviously, this is the follow-up to the Triptyque that had three faces, this has four faces, more of the same. This is Jaeger flexing and Jaeger showing the world that, hey, this is the kind of stuff that we can do. I always talked about Jaeger, how they make their own machines and make their own movements, and that it's also there's also a value in their brand. If any other major brand out there was even able to come out with something like this. And mind you, this is in a very compact reverse show case. Yeah, incredible. And it, the watch has four different faces, so the case in its own. And you guys, if you get a, didn't get a chance to check out my video, the history of the reverse show, we're going back to the, the Art Deco time, 1920s. Really cool episode to watch if you're into this kind of stuff. But the the watch in itself is a mechanical one, that the case in itself, right? When they came out with it in 1921, I believe. It's the fact that you and I are able to put complications in 1928. the case. 21. Uh, 19, the, the case itself that houses those complications. The, the sort of, you basically have four watches in one. It's just, it's an insane, insane watch. And this is a watch that I'd probably be honored to wear on my wrist. Hence, 10 pieces made. Exactly. Now, let's get to the purple elephant in the room. Have the another drink Panther. before we Let's talk about this. Oh boy. So, this was actually very, very interesting, and I'm just going to go out there and say it. So, over the years, we've accumulated many, many clients, and I got a lot of phone calls a couple weeks ago about this. Well, we did hear that AP signed a contract with Marvel. Right. Where they're going to come out. We knew, with we knew, we knew it about that ahead of time, but there were zero leaks about the actual right. watches so that, going to that's, come out. That's exactly. There was a rendering of a Royal Oak Turbion with the Iron Man on it, and I thought that was the one. So I was I got, hoping that would be the one. So I really like Iron Man. I, I got um, a bunch of phone calls from clients. I said, I was invited to the unveiling, let's say. So what they did was they took the clients into like a secret room, took their phones away, and were basically like, do you want the watch or do you not want the watch? Sight unseen, I bought one in China. You did? <laughs> okay? This is the first watch ever in my life that I bought sight unseen. Mind you, meaning that he did. we didn't know what that we watch is going to look like. They, we just know what it's going to said. They said that it's 42 millimeter concept tourbillon. So I'm like, okay, well, that's a good start because it's about time that the concepts which, scale which down. Which is going to bring me to my point. Hold that thought. Which, I, which I'm happy that, the, that they scale the concepts down to 42 millimeters because the 44s are just too big for a lot of people. So I'm like, all right, well, that's a good start. Next thing they said, that it's purple. I'm like, okay, mm. that, that's cool. Listen, they had, the purple, they had the purple uh, Turbion Royal Oak. They had the purple Chrono, the Sandblast. Uh, uh, the Sundust Dial. The Sundust yeah. Dial. No, no, I, mean, I know. That, yeah. Um, so I'm like, okay, purple, I can dig it. What else can you tell me about the watch? Because if you put it on a flat Royal Oak background, just a flat dial, and you put like a Black Panther in there, I can kind of gauge what that looks like. But as we know, concepts are skeletonized most of the time. They have, it, right? So I'm like, so where's the Black Panther? And they basically said there's a Black Panther, like a 3D Black Panther floating out of the dial. So I'm like, all right, somebody, somebody's got to like this watch. You know what I mean? So I'm like, confirm it. So I confirm it. We actually got um, screwed on the deal. We got sold out. And I'm kind of happy we, we did. We, well, we got <laughs> sold out by this dealer who sold it to somebody else. Yeah. I don't know if you offered the watch uh, at the same time. We actually know the dealer he sold it to. We're not upset about it. We did let him know that, hey, don't do that again. Uh, but long story short, I think that dealer still has that watch. I don't think it's sold. He did sell it. Oh, he did sell yeah, it. He did. But right now what's happening is so I got clients calling me that have zero history with Audemars Piguet and that watch is being offered to them at That's list. Also, also true. So the, the, first, the first thing that I said uh, to my clients overseas was I like that it's 42. I like the fact that it's purple. The Black Panther, okay, kind of cool. I was a I little mean, bit... Out of all I, the characters... Well, listen, they had to pick one. Listen, uh, Ch Chadwick Boseman just died, so I think that's why they probably okay. revealed yes. the first one. Yes. So I, I, guess, I guess I'll give it that. The, yes. thing, the thing that killed me on it was limited edition to 250 pieces. This is a very specific watch for 250 pieces. And we know that they're going to hit the market hard and fast, 
right? So that was my that was my initial. And we also concern. know that a lot of clients out there today in the market that we're in are there to buy these things to resell them, which yeah. means there's going to be a lot of them floating out on the market, yeah. and you're going to eventually see the price of a drop. So, now, when they did unveiling, which was on Saturday, <laughs> I got a whole bunch of phone calls like. Dude, are you seeing what's going on here? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, they just sold it for 5.2 million. It's, keep in mind, we forgot to mention that the retail price on the watch is about 160,000. It's US. actually, it's actually 161,824. What is it with yeah. these numbers? I don't get it. No, Swiss franc conversion. Yeah. When it comes out, the Swiss yeah, franc conversion. Right. So, 160,000 dollar uh, list. I committed to my guy overseas for like 10,000 dollars over over list, and I get a phone call like, dude, they just sold it for 5.2 million dollars. Like, what? <laughs> what the hell? So I go on Audemars Piquet Live, and there's Francois, the CEO of Audemars Piquet, with Kevin Hart. And funny enough, when I funny enough when when I Kevin was funny as hell. Yeah, actually, when when uh, when I confirmed the watch, the first person I had in my mind was because because we know somebody that's friends with him. Where was I'm going to sell this watch to him for Kevin Hart because I know Kevin Hart is a, is uh, was friends with Chadwick Boseman, yeah. so I figured this would be a great piece for him. Um, I think he already got one from AP. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he got. Well, well hence he was he was uh, yeah. one of the guys up there. But it wasn't the actual Black Panther. It was a piece unique they made in white gold. I believe it was exactly. diamond and cross. Exactly. But the marketing behind it was absolutely phenomenal. The show that they did, the auction that they did, the technology behind it was was great. It so I'm amazing. like, so I got a little bit pissed. I was like, damn. I was Maybe like, I should have bought that watch. Like, well, listen, I confirmed that we, we got screwed on the deal. But I was like, then I started calling people like. Yo, get me a Black Panther, get me, get me a Black Panther, get me a Black Panther. Then when I looked at the watch, and I went on Instagram and a few other forums, and I okay. saw how many people Ian, I'm gonna need, I'm gonna, Ian, I'm going to need you to do me a favor. I'm going to need you to take this watch, I'm going to take this picture, I'm going to need you to Photoshop six... Actually, I'm going to need you to Photoshop. The time should be set to 6.35. <laughs> And when you set the time to 635, oh, you'll man. notice there's something dangling between his legs. Hence, this watch was dubbed the BBC watch, if you guys seen Instagram memes. With that said, uh, I will tell you this. I was so excited about a 42 millimeter concept. You heard me earlier mention that that's literally my favorite complication. And when I heard they're gonna scale this watch down to 42 millimeter, I said, oh my God, this is actually gonna be, able, be a watch I may actually be able to wear. And then they did this, and I post, I put on Instagram, there's an Invicta. Either can maybe pop it up. Yeah. There's a there's a uh, a Black Panther Invicta uh, out there, and I put the two side by side, and it kind of killed it for me. But let's continue on because this is not. We're not just going to talk about the concept. Let's talk about the bigger elephant in the room, and that is no, green sunburst dial fifteen two o two, jumbo extra thin in platinum. Well, that's a smaller elephant. I would uh, say. That's, that's okay. One oh one oh five four hundred. Yeah. Houdinki dubbed it smoked green. Why? Yeah. Why can it just be green? Yeah. Uh, because I mean, black, it's, black a, it's a gra it's a graduating doll. Kind of reminds me of the older Rolex dials. Your thoughts, Adrian? Um, big fan. Obviously, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the case size of the fifteen two hundred two, and I think it's one of the best looking watches on my wrist personally, from the stainless steel pieces to the yellow gold to the rose gold pieces. And I'm a huge platinum guy, and any white metal with the green. With a green dial, I'm a big fan of. So I'm extremely, extremely excited about this. Uh, you know, shout out to AP for for this watch. And at a retail of 105,000, I see this being 250 right out the gate. And let me tell you another thing, guys. Shout out to John Mayer, because if I had to pinpoint the time where we went from the craze of the blue dial to the craze of the green dial, it would be with the Green Daytona. That dude straight up put green on that. He, <laughs> Unbelievable. he put a, now, mind you, I always, I was always successful selling. <laughs> Green Dial watches way before whichever they may have been and the reason for that because we have a huge market in the Middle East and Middle East uh, Middle Eastern clients prefer green the color green the color of Mecca and that has always been popular in a, in a small part of the world however now green has gone so mainstream and look I told you guys before all these brands they all jump on bandwagons be it crystal be it ceramic whatever it might be it doesn't matter if green is hot guess what full lineup of green speaking of which Royal Oak Chrono mm -hmm. Green Dial yes uh, Retail seventy eight thousand. Mm -hmm. uh, we won't mention any names. We won't mention any prices. But let's just say we already had one, and one went north of one hundred and fifty thousand. Yes. All right. So we're talking about double list on that. Uh, again, personally, yellow gold green. You know how I always say rose gold black mm -hmm. is like the best metal combo. I mm -hmm. think rose gold, not so much the platinum, but I mm -hmm. think 
we had that watch in person. We looked at it. I can we compared it to the Daytona, if you remember. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have yep. I have the picture of two side by side. I think at this point we can pop it up. So I'll give it to you, and you can pop it in. The green on the AP, they did an outstanding job. If you look at the green Daytona, because it's a shiny green, it tends to blend in in the chronographs. When you look at the green on the AP Chrono, I think that is the most outstanding green doll yellow gold combo out there. If you ask me. I like it better than this platinum. I actually, you know, this actually this watch because when it came in, it came with two two straps. It came on the bracelet, but it also had two straps. It had a leather leather strap and a uh, green rubber strap, and that's the first time because when the watch came in, we didn't take the bracelet off, but I kind of put the straps, you know, near the case just to kind of examine. That's, this is the first watch where I prefer a strap rather than a bracelet. I'd still go with the bracelet. I, I know I, what you're saying. I, there's there's too much yellow going on for me there. Speaking of the trendsetters, Rolex. I mean, Rolex Rolex didn't surprise me. Rolex, Rolex kind everybody, of every Rolex. year everybody says it's underwhelming. Of course it's underwhelming. No, it's not true. There, there's been a Ro couple. Ro listen, Rolex does what Rolex does best. They take a hot model, they change a the bracelet, they change a the dial, they change something else, they change the size and so on and so forth. Sky Dweller on a Jubilee okay, bracelet. Okay, well, before before we before we talk about this, I think the most important thing to point out about the Rolex releases is what happened in the market. So, a couple weeks ago, actually probably more than a couple weeks ago, a few months ago, I don't know where this information came from, but somebody somewhere somehow had mentioned that, guess what, the green dial Daytona and, and the, the platinum, platinum Daytona, Daytona is being discontinued. Oh my God, oh my God. So people started going crazy in the market. Prices are shooting through the roof. We started seeing some crazy records being set. And uh, hundred and twelve thousand dollars for a green Daytona, I think, brand new sticker. Now the the most I saw them go for was one oh two stickered, but well somebody posted but one two, for one twelve. But, but two months before that it was sixty. It it doubled in it almost doubled in price in a matter of two months because of, because of the speculation. Well I always tell you guys, if anybody tells you and you think about these brands of Rolex specifically that is being discontinued. Well, they made so many, they're lying to you. Nobody has that information. It's usually all speculation. So my first disappointment was the fact that they did not discontinue them because I had loaded up on some platinum and yellow gold Daytonas. Although we we made out well, I know a Who lot. Bought of, them I, right I know still. a lot. I know a lot of dealers that got that got stuck holding the bag because their clients like backed out last minute, which is also incorrect to yeah. do. But you know, here here we are. Um, I do believe that there's still a lot of room Note for them to, to grow. Take a deposit. Yes. <laughs> um, I still believe there's a lot of room for them to grow, and they will become discontinued soon. So sooner or later, they're gonna, you know, green Daytonas are gonna pop back up over a hundred and. But it's, it's not. Look, just because somebody uh, sold one for one hundred two, they were still trading at eighty, and they're still trading at eighty. It's not like they went back down to sixty. They're still eighty thousand dollars plus. They're just not a hundred. Oh, plus pending condition. Yeah. There's just not a hundred. Yeah. And you know what? As the market dries up on them. Will they grow to 100 if things continue going the way they're going? I think they so. will. And because the Platinums are still climbing. Yeah, Platinums. Platinums. Uh, I, you I just sold a pre owned one from how long ago? Today. Today. You sold a pre owned 2019. one. 2019. to a dealer for how much? For 110. For 110. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and again, this is a watch that we literally three weeks ago delivered brand new sticker for 100 to a dealer. So, you know, it's they're still. No, it's actually to a private. I think it was no, no, no. That was that was, was the guy, our, our, our guy on Forty Seventh Street. Again, I at the time I was delivering to him for a hundred thousand dollars. I could have sold that watch for one fifteen, but we never backed out. Obviously, uh, you know what I really like that's worth noting is uh, the Crayola, the Crayola crayon box. Not a fan at all. I absolutely love those watches. All right, these day dates to me, the blue one. My wife, hundred percent. It's not part of it's, it's, it's a special order. The case I think size? these are thirty sixes. It's a not special bad. it's a special order only watch. So I think I'm gonna ask our friend to order the blue one for my wife. Is it really I like the order. Special order only. Yeah, they're, special, they're not that. part of the regular calendar, they're special okay. order. So you have that chocolate look with the ever rose, you have the orange and the yellow gold, and you have the baby blue with the white. Personally, I like all three of them. I could see all three of them in my wife's watch box. It's unnecessary. Yes. They, I won't do that. Yeah. But if I had to pick, I would probably go with the baby blue, white, gold. Depends. It depends what bag you got with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, my wife is not like that. She doesn't care. Uh, but long story short, another uh, honorable mention I have to talk about the palm dials, right? Sort of those leafy dials. I think the only one that takes the cake there is the one with the green dial because you can actually see the palms. Uh, the two tone that sort of has that yellowish dial and the gray dial, you barely see those palm hands or whatever you want to call it. Uh, so I think the green one there takes the cake. I think you're really boring me. You're, you're of, of all the dial mentions, you're going to talk about some All right, let's talk about the, 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 the president. I, I know, palm dial I know but I like it. I like the green palm dial. It's nice. 
listen, look yeah, at yeah. what the the OPs did in different colors. They're they're through the roof yeah, still. They'll do it well. And I think this will do the same. What about the uh, meteorite dials? Meteorite dials. So they took first what, and foremost the white gold oyster flex with the meteorite dial. Sign me up. I will get one. That thing is fire. Thank you. On the picture. Why is that thing fire? Because of what I've been telling you all the time, when you show me the Pepsi with the meteorite dial, it's when they, still fire. It's not because the Pepsi, the Pepsi Still bezel fire. takes away from the meteorite dial. The I reason the great. Oyster Flakes white gold looks so good is because you see the meteorite and there's nothing taking away from it. I can see the meteorite dial and Pepsi pretty well. I think it's fantastic. We're just never going to agree on never that. Never going to agree on that. Which so, th so putting it, putting these meteorite dials in various watches, I think was a plus on that Rolex. And I think Rolex recognized that. Look, the meteorite dial was neither here or there. It was very expensive. You know, it added a big number. Nobody to really cared for them. Nobody. Really, not, not that it, the yeah. hype, that big hype wasn't there thing. on gold models. It's a new thing. And now they're saying, well, wait a minute. This is, here's something hot that we can bring back, put it in these models, and they're going to sell like hotcakes, and they will. Thoughts on a Sky Dweller on a Jubilee bracelet? I st I'm, I'm, my, I'm still on the fence. Uh, I, I think I'd see it in person to to really gauge what that looks like. I mean, I, I think it's a, I'm, I don't, I don't love f fluted bezels with Jubilee bracelet combinations. There's too much jubilation, flutation going on. <laughs> 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 jubilation and flutilation. There's like too much that is going on. You know, I, Isn't I that the complication <laughs> that's in the Jaeger trip team? I actually like, <laughs> when, when I look at a day trust, I actually prefer a Jubilee bracelet with a dome bezel. I think it's just a cleaner look or, and vice versa. If it's a fluted bezel, I like an oyster bracelet. So I think it, we'll see. It's one of those things where I have to see. Jubilation, <laughs> jubilation. I like, ooh, we're going to have to patent that. Uh, uh, okay, so then uh, the new Explorers. Total bummer. I thought that those were also going to be discontinued, and they're nothing. there's nothing new about it. You could tell me there's some new power reserve, some movement, some th th uh, thinness in the case. Listen, it looks bare minimum, right? It looks the same. Uh, it's, again, it's this, is, again this is 50th anniversary. Right. Yeah, you would think uh, with the fiftieth anniversary, they yeah, would the, the, the bracelet is slightly wider, the case yeah. is slightly simmer. New in house, uh, uh, now houses the upgrade caliber thirty two eighty five. They they made in uh, twenty eighteen again. Don't care. Mm. Don't care. Oh, I can si uh, I I can sizel. I can sizel dial. Uh, what now? I can. <laughs> I can style dial. Einstein dial. The oh, you're talking about the data. I can't. I cannot. I, pronounce, can, I cannot pronounce. I can. I cannot pronounce. I can. I can zizzle yeah, something like that. Zizzle. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good that dial. Look, that stone. Cool. Stone dials. Yeah. If you look at some of the older things, some neo vintage things and things of that nature, anything with a stone dial tends to go up in value. Goes to go up mm -hmm. in value well. So my rule of thumb is that pretty much any stone dial in a Rolex is a win. Yeah. Uh, I, and I still can't pronounce that stone. Maybe I can, can spell it out, but uh, yeah. that one, the yeah, one that starts exactly. with an I, certainly, <laughs> certainly that one. Out of the Funny enough, out of the meteorite dials, mm -hmm. not a fan in the yellow gold, not a fan in uh, the rose gold because again, I feel like the meteorite dial gets lost. But the white gold, uh, but the white gold oyster. Flex. Again, just just from the stock images that they release, it's going to be hard to tell what they look like on, on yellow or rose gold. I agree. Well, yeah. we we can we can say we can say um, unanimously that on that white metal oyster flex, it's going to look sick. Remains to be seen how it's going to look on rose and yellow. Rose probably better than yellow, but we'll see. Uh, again, white gold, 100% agree with you on that. Again, there's plenty more brands that we're showing in watches and wonders. I picked a couple oh, of more. Before, before we get to that, there's one thing I did want to mention with Rolex. For some reason in my head, I don't know where I got this, but when Rolex was going to do the drop, I was hoping that they were going to release a platinum sky dweller with a baby blue dial. I don't know why, where that I got would be that sick. in my head, but I was like, "That's like that's the like one. Uh, like the blue dials." That oh, have or in the how presence. about how about that sky dweller full, fully baguette? Woo! That would be that. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll drink to that. <laughs> yeah. uh, let's talk about Cecile Parnell. Mm -hmm. uh, I visited Parnell a couple of times while I was in Basel. Uh, genius brand, genius watchmaker. Does a lot of work for others gets contracted to make turbine movements and things of that nature. And this year, this guy decided, you know what, I'm going to show everybody how big my automatic concept Black Panther is. Yeah, and, uh, so and I'm going to make <laughs> you didn't get that. Pernell, <laughs> I did, Pernell Escape 2, Absolute Sapphire. It's the world's first double, triple axis turbine. That's right, double, triple axis turbine. Now, triple axis turbines, we talked about the turbines. We all know that. Global. We all know that uh, Mr. Breguet uh, made uh, the turbine to offset the effect that gravity had on 
a watch movement, and unfortunately it only worked when it's perpendicular to the ground because rightfully so, it was made for a pocket watch originally. Of course, there were two determions, one that span among two axes, right, the Y and the X axis, so you had a little more flexibility with the turbine working and making a watch more accurate. It was Tom, Thomas Pressure in 2002, an independent watchmaker who still exists today as an independent, uh, that created the first three axis turbines, which means the turbine cage now spins on all three axes, which means no matter how you wear the watch and how you twist it, the turbine is still working and adjusting the main spring, main spring to the effect that gravity had on the movement. Of course, Cecile Pornell said, hey, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon of crystal. He made it in crystal. Uh, this watch retailed a cool million dollars. Uh, let's see, was this, this was a limited edition or not? I am not sure. I'm not sure if it's a one-off, if this was a limited edition, but I would assume that it's either a one-off or I can't see him making more than five of these, uh, just because it's very tough for somebody to go out there and drop a million bucks on a Cecile Pornell. Mm -hmm. Cecile Pornell, had this been a uh, richer meal for obvious reasons. Uh, we can pop up a picture of uh, the triple axis turbine on the screen. You see it's outfitted with diamonds, with blue metal. I mean, the amount of work that went into this watch and the craftsmanship behind it is absolutely amazing. But more, oh, as a horology geek, I'll tell you, to is a triple axis turbine a little bit of an overkill? Absolutely, to begin with, because look, at the end of the day, if you're accurate within a few seconds, uh, which most watches will be today, even without a turbine, it's okay. But the concept behind the fact that he managed to execute a triple axis turbine and put two of them in a single watch, making this probably the most accurate mechanical watch out there is absolutely amazing. And honestly, looks-wise, I think he knocked it out of the park. This is just amazing. The way, and this is going back to the meteorite house. What When you look at the watch, and again, this is a rendering, I would love to see this in person, but when you look at the watch, front and center, right there, the two turbine cages, you know, spinning among three axes. Absolute amazing timepiece. I agree. That's about all I can say about that. Is that all you can say about that? I agree. I no, but that's that. a sick watch. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least, uh, I'll tell you why I threw this in here. Because uh, the U the new Ulysse Nardine Diver X Skeleton uh, is, uh, they merged basically the executive skeleton and the diver together. Now, just to back up a little bit, uh, I talked a while back, I talked about Ulysse Nardine rebranding and decided to go cheaper. It killed off a lot of their older complications. Here's a brand that used to sell a Ulysse Nardine Freak for you know at least over a hundred thousand dollars, and then they scaled it down, and now we, you were able to buy a Freak for around thirty thousand uh, dollars. They made a Turbion that was twenty-five thousand dollars. They really decided to revamp their entire image after they kind of died off when the Russian market died off post-crisis. They never really recovered. That was one of their biggest markets, and uh, they were doing closeouts for a while, and then they decided, you know what, we're just going to stop, regroup, rebrand, and cheapen the brand. And they did cheapen the brand, not just by lowering price. Because when you lower prices, when you can get out there and get a Turbion or a Freak in a realm of twenty to $30,000, and there's all this old inventory out there, Freak Diablo, that retail for $165,000 and all that stuff, it uh, is going to take them a little, bit of, a little while to get back on a horse with these cheaper things. It's going to take time for, for, first, the market to absorb a lot of the older inventory because they made a lot of inventory. I mean, we're out there buying. I was offered a Genghis Khan yesterday for two hundred fifty thousand yeah, dollars in the past. A watch I used to sell for six fifty, right? Crazy. But I got to tell you, uh, I love and hate this little watch. For some reason, when I first look at this, uh, you know, Executive Diver Skeleton X, it reminded me of a Timex or really? a Swatch watch. Look at it. This looks like a Swatch watch. But I, I do like what they did with the, with the Freak X line. Remember that black one that we had? The uh, absolutely, fiber? absolutely. It actually looked really cool. It does. And for the price. Look, yeah. this, thing, this thing retails for $22,200 for a skeleton diver watch. Is it a term? No, no. It's a skeleton diver. Executive. It's their new. It's the, they took the new executive and they made it into a diver. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous watch. What I love seeing is that Nardine is sticking to their uh, nautical roots. Uh, the watches are mostly nautically themed. Mm -hmm. And you know what, for $22,200, once these hit the market, you'll be out there you know, getting it at a discount 20 to 30% off. I think it's a hell of a deal under $20,000. Mm -hmm. So although at a glance it first looked like a swatch watch, maybe because the orange and blue combination, the rubber strap, et cetera, but nevertheless, they're going in the right direction. It's just going to take time for the brand to settle itself in pick up that new clientele and unfortunately a lot of the older clients are still going to be pretty pissed because they pay top dollar for a lot of the stuff that they used to produce back when their average retail price was probably double to triple to what it is now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to finish this off and I want to talk to you Adrian about the kiss of death for the watch market which, which was always a, a collab with Great Clark album Baker. by the way. Huh? Great album by the way. Kiss of death. Yes it was. Uh, <laughs> 
Richard Mille has partnered up with, uh, we, we mentioned in episode 12 that Richard Mille has partnered with uh, Ferrari, right? Which sounds like a cool idea, but Ferrari has been the kiss of death for a lot of brands. Start with Gerard Perigo. All right, nothing but closeouts out there. Let's go with Panerai. Nothing but closeouts out there. Let's move on to Hublot. Not a whole lot of success out there. You would think that the La Ferrari Turbions would be selling over list. I shouldn't say a, a complete flop, but nevertheless, if you talk to anybody in the industry, they all feel like the minute you pair up with Ferrari, it's like literally the kiss of death. And now we have probably the one company that should be in line with Ferrari, and that's the racing machine on your wrist, which is Richard Meal. Before you go to answer, I know what you're going to say. Uh, I will just give you a, my thought process when somebody asked me that question in one of the Q&As, and I answered them like this. I said, I don't know what the story is or what the cost behind using the Ferrari name is. It must be so tremendous that in order for a watch company to be able to utilize that name, make those watches, they have to make so many of them for it to make financial sense. That, and again, this is just a theory, not something. I know that's just a theory I came up with. And my thought process was that I have to make a whole lot of watches. But now, we're, it's a different ballgame. Now we're talking about Richard Mille, Adrian. There's thoughts. two key differences of obviously the brands that you just discussed, and I am almost out, so let's finish off here. You had mentioned Gerard Perigo, you mentioned Panerai, and you mentioned Hublot. My friend, those are not Richard Mille. Well, yeah, they're spelled differently. I get it. Yeah. Never <laughs> has a car brand needed a watch brand more than Ferrari needs Richard Mille. And I'm not saying Ferrari actually needs Richard Mille because Ferrari is the biggest car company in the world. However, what's going to happen is... Biggest name, I would say. I biggest would say name. Biggest car. This collaboration is going to be a humongous success. And there's only one way, and, and there's only one reason that I say that because of the success that McLaren had with Richard Mille, okay? The stunt that they pulled with the collaboration. So you're able to get an 1103 McLaren if you had, if you bought, I'm sorry, if you bought a McLaren Senna, you were allowed allocation immediately for an 1103 McLaren. At 168,000, right? Exactly. That's 500 1103 McLarens that they sold. Easy. That's almost, that's. And How much is that car? Uh, the car probably retailed at the time for 1.5 to 2 million pending spec. Now, I'm not saying every. How much is a McLaren Richard Mule today? Uh, well, the 1103 is over $600,000, but then they also had the McLaren Turbo. So I'm, I'm talking specifically the 1103 McLaren. There's a lot of people that bought a Senate that did not buy 1103. Do you think McLaren. there were people that bought the Senate because of it and because of the Richard Mule? Absolutely. I will, I will say that's an absolute fact because Richard Mille as a brand is stronger than McLaren as a, as a brand. So the, Richard Mille literally put McLaren on the map. Richard Mille's not going to put Ferrari back on the map, but I'm sure they're going to do a similar collaboration in, the, in you that think, sense. Do you think McLaren... Do you and uh, here, here's one more thing I want to point out. Is when you look at brands like Gerard Perigo, Gerard Perigo Hublot, and Panerai for the Ferraris, they produced a lot of different watches over their lines. Hublot had big bangs, they had uh, bigger bangs, smaller bigger bangs, bangs, smaller bangs, all type of Ferrari, Ferrari yeah, models. Gerard Perigo, Panerai, the Ferrari one, two, three, four, up to a hundred. Yeah, Gerard Perigo pretty much did every. They're old probably Ferrari going model out to there. make no more than three different fa uh, Richard Mille Ferraris. It's going to be a super complicated piece. It's going to be. I already know one. Which one? That it's going to be. Um, don't remember the name of it. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The, the this is, I, I'm saying McLaren. They're doing a Richard a McLaren Speedtail with the Richard Mille watch, but I think that's the last one that they're doing. They're doing a Richard Mille Turbi on Ferrari. It's going to be super limited. It's probably going to be some type of collaboration with the car. And then I don't see them doing more than two or three watches because again, Richard Mille branding. They don't produce a lot of watches. Yes, yeah, so Ferrari. For, if I remember correctly, Ferrari. Panerai, you know how they have the PAM, uh, yeah. Panerai, yeah. PAM, whatever number? They FER. They made the FER. Well, it yeah. went from 0, 1 to 22. Yeah, they had it's, it's Hublot 22 had, different models. Hublot had titanium, rose golds, all different type of case size, all different type of uh, lines absolutely. of Hublot. Carbon dials, They're carbon going to make discs. no more than two or three Richard Mille we sold, we sold the McLaren Turbion, uh, and with it came an actual race car. Yeah. And the case it came in, maybe we can uh, we can get Ian to film that. We left that in your dad's Which office. One? No, 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 that was a Lotus. That was before they did the McLaren. Oh, that, that was a Lotus. Lotus. Oh, that was Which, again, Richard Mille put Lotus on the map, and they did extremely, extreme. A lot of times... Let me ask you a question. A lot of times... McLaren, hold on. McLaren, yeah. Richard Mille collab, Lotus, Richard Mille collab, Ferrari, Richard Mille collab. Is anybody paying anybody or, or no? 
in your opinion? Is anybody paying anybody? Is McLaren paying Richard Mille? Is Richard Mille paying McLaren? Uh, I'm not. I'm not really sure how that works. I feel like um, I feel like with the McLaren call out, Richard Mille wasn't quite on the spot. I feel like they may have actually paid them. Um, who paid who? I think Richard Mille may have paid McLaren, or there was some. Sort I, I, of a, I, I, I there was some kind of revenue. I really sharing. don't know. But I, with, but now with Ferrari and Richard Mille, do you think anybody's paying anybody? No, for sure not. There's no way. There's no way if Ferrari's paying Richard Mille, that's A, because listen, Ferrari's Ferrari, but there's definitely no way Richard Mille's paying I Ferrari. Feel there's I, some type of cl collaborative effort. I get what you're saying, but like at the end of the day, Nadal is getting paid. Richard, no, Richard Mille pays their ambassadors. Richard, it's funny. I but was, how, how, do you, how do you figure they're not paying Ferrari for the rights to use their name? Because Ferrari is huge there, There's that. some type of collaboration that they're doing, like I said. very. If, I, if I had to get a, take a logical guess, I still think that Richard Mille is paying something to Ferrari. It, that would probably be the case before Ferrari pays Richard Mille, but I, I think both brands are going to... Oh, they're both going to benefit they're tremendously. They're going to benefit tremendously. Do you think they're going to do some kind of a car thing as well? Like, you, that's you, what you I'm, get the Richard well, Mille That's what Ferrari. I'm saying. If there's some type of, like, new new Ferrari hypercar that's coming out. But I think at the, but I think at this point, it's like, oh, uh, if you get this Ferrari, you're able to get this Richard Mille. I don't know. I think he could work in reverse, like, honestly. Well, no, that's what they did with McLaren. If you right. get, you were able to get the Richard Mille. But what I'm saying to you now is like he works in reverse. It could be like, oh, if you buy this Ferrari, you're able to get the Richard Mille is what I'm saying. Because oh, Richard yeah, Mille is so yeah. hot right now. That's yeah. insane. Well, listen, I, what they did with Lotus, the, the actual watch itself, amazing. They yeah. absolutely did s uh, smoking job with where's the RM11 the, what, Lotus. What, what, where's, where's that RM11 I mean, Lotus trading at right now? Five times retail price, it's even insane. to this day. It's McLaren, insane. we are already know what that is. And now you throw Ferrari, the greatest sports car brand of all time with a Richard Mille. Oh, baby, that's it. Well, I'm gonna, we're going to leave you guys on that note. I can't wait to see what Richard Mille and Ferrari have in store for this collab. For sure. I'm assuming it'll be some sort of a new car, <laughs> maybe. But they have in store nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but they have in store nothing, yeah. Pun, no, pun intended, right? Uh, before we wrap this up, so we printed out a bunch of comments on uh, a humongous board. Apparently, that's downstairs. Uh, and we're just going to throw a few darts and uh, pick three winners. Ready? So, are you a good dart player? <laughs> Here the, uh, the darts and the, uh, the board is right on there. Oh, we can't see anything anyway. Oh, he's going to miss. He's going to miss. I call it miss right now. Uh, <laughs> you know what I love? I love the fact that Alex is down there <laughs> taping us. Alex, you might want to move back. That's, that's what I said. I said, why, why me? Why can't it be Nick? <laughs> are you supposed to tape the darts hitting the board? I don't, yeah, I guess. Well, then look at the board, not at me. <laughs> Zoom in. Just, just throw it. Brick. Ooh. Wait, wait. Should I? Wait till all three. All right, sure, I better not miss. <laughs> We're doing a retape if I miss. <laughs> all right. All right, what do we got? All right. So, first up is Peter G. Aziz esque. Cartier made the first sports watch in 1904, not AP. First what? Sports watch? Yeah. AP made the first sports luxury watch. There we go. Uh, next up uh, would be London Man. Roman is so wrong about the blue dial white gold GMT. Yes, he is. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> next. And the last. Ooh. Is that, in is that like in between two? Yeah, it's a tie. Oh, I might of, of course, the... Adrian. Uh, redo? Yeah, I got to do a redo. Well, get, get, what, where's you, the closest to? We have another dart? It's, dude, it's smack in the middle. Yeah, look at bring that. Back up. Look at that shot. Bring it, by, bring it back up. <laughs> no, don't no, throw no, it back up. <laughs> bring it back up. You want to do a redo? Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's got another dart. Oh, you got right, dart. Right, right on the line. Good. Right on line again. Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, kind of, but. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious right now? <laughs> Two lines. I can't even pick one. It's it's literally in the middle. All right, give him another dart. Give him another dart. <laughs> Two lines. What is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> what do you mean? That. <laughs> right, if you hit this in between both comments, you're getting a sweatshirt. I don't care. <laughs> I swear. Can we try this again? Yeah. All right, that's in the middle, so that's it. <laughs> Alex? Okay. Okay, I think we got one. Yeah, that's, no, that's in the middle. 
Uh, you know what? The two commas that are above and below are getting a sweatshirt. Read them both. So Nadal Jamil, Jam Jamili. Yeah. You are the best, Habibi. Uh, and then the second one is B space D T. Love this one. Okay. So we have four winners. Well, there you have it. Because Adrian can't hit a dog. You're dunk. welcome. <laughs> Guys, don't forget like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next week on Watches and Whiskey. Thank you.